The deadliest sniper in history. Snipers are as important as the rest of the military team. Some people might argue that they're the most important members of a team. Their ability to hide and blend with the environment makes them even more deadly, which is a plus for the team. And if the sniper is too good at hiding, it makes them even deadlier. Some even practice making animal sounds just so that they can confuse their enemies. But who are some of the deadliest snipers in history? Let's get it on. Number 9. Billy Singh 201 kills When William Billy Singh signed up to fight in the First World War, he had no idea he would be one of the top snipers of the entire conflict. Some might even say he is one of the top snipers ever. He was part of the Australian Imperial Force and deployed on the infamous Gallipoli Front in May 1915. Billy was among the snipers chosen, and having been born in 1886 in rural Queensland, Australia, he had grown up around guns and horses. By the time he was enlisted, he had already become pretty good at both of them. By October 1915, Billy had already killed at least 201 Ottoman soldiers, but it is said that the number could be higher. He was so good that even Anzac soldiers gave him multiple nicknames such as the Assassin and the Murderer. And because of what he did, he will forever go down in history as a great sniper. Number 8. Vasily Zaitsev 225 kills The Battle of Stalingrad on World War II's Eastern Front was one of the history's largest and bloodiest battles. The fact that it was in a dense urban setting meant that well-trained and experienced snipers from Nazi Germany and Soviet Russia could exercise their expertise. Both sides sent millions of reinforcements into the city over the course of the battle, which lasted for five months. However, Russian snipers proved to be pretty deadly, with some of the USSR's best snipers playing a key role in the ultimate German defeat at Stalingrad. One of the Russian snipers was Vasily Grigorievich Zaitsev. He had already made over 225 kills in less than five weeks, including 11 elite German snipers. Zaitsev was one of the top Nazi killers of the entire war. According to some records, he had about 400 confirmed kills, for which he was even awarded the Hero of the Soviet Union Medal. After the war, Zaitsev would continue to become a memorable figure in Soviet Russia. During the war, he had to come up with some new techniques, and right now, Russian sniper units are still learning and utilizing these techniques in actual combat. Number 7. Joseph Allerberger 257 kills Initially, Joseph Allerberger was posted as a German machine gunner on the Eastern Front in September 1943. However, he quickly realized he was better with sniper rifles. The war in the East was not going too well for the Germans after they were defeated in Stalingrad in January. Moreover, the Soviet snipers were greatly weakening the retreating German army. If you read about the war, you know how it ended. But at the time, Allerberger couldn't turn around. He even managed to slow down the Red Army's advance in that particular sector. He had made a name for himself as one of the deadliest Wehrmacht soldiers on the front, with at least 257 confirmed kills. During his attacks, he had to be creative about them and develop different techniques. It was these techniques that gave him maximum impact on the field. One great technique he used was shooting the soldiers at the rear to create confusion and slow down a Soviet attack. He was also famous for camouflaging with an umbrella made of local foliage, which was an effective yet easily deployable technique. It was this easy technique that allowed him to work deep behind enemy lines. Number 6. Lyudmila Pavlichenko 309 kills Lyudmila Pavlichenko was one of the many Soviet citizens who voluntarily signed up to defend their country when Germany invaded the Soviet Union in June 1941. And even though at the time she was studying to be a scholar and teacher at Kiev University, she was also good with the rifle because of her time spent at the local sniper school. She would later apply the skills she learned at the sniper school on the battlefield. In fact, she was so good that people even nicknamed her Lady Death. The name came as a testament to her killings. Throughout the war, Lyudmila killed at least 309 Axis soldiers, 36 of whom were snipers like her. That's just how good she was. Initially, she was sent to the Odessa region, but the rapidly shifting front saw her headed to Sevastopol on the Crimean Peninsula. It was here that the invading Germans greatly outnumbered the besieged defenders. Nonetheless, Lyudmila claimed most of her kills during this battle. And even though the city fell after 250 days of nothing but war, Lyudmila played a great role in weakening the German war effort in the east. Number 5. Mathaus Hetzenauer 345 kills Mauthaus Hetzenauer was part of the Wehrmacht's 3rd Mountain Division deployed in Central Europe in 1944. At this time, all German efforts were focused on slowing down the rapid Soviet advance toward Berlin. 
It was also when Hitler was mobilizing some of his best units to stabilize the front in the east. Even though Matthaus had first trained as a mountain infantryman, his commanders noticed his talent for sniping and immediately started training him as a sniper. Little did they know that he would go on to become one of the deadliest German snipers on the eastern front. He managed to kill at least 345 Red Army soldiers in a few months. He was later sent off due to a head injury, meaning he couldn't be a sniper anymore. He was awarded the Iron Cross for his contribution to the German war effort, which is now considered a hateful neo-Nazi symbol in most places. Mauthaus did his job a little too well before being captured by Soviet forces in May 1945. Number 4. Francis Pegamagabo 378 kills Even though there were snipers before the First World War, the modern sniper really came into his own in the gritty fighting of the Great War. It was not long before snipers were armed with new, improved weapons like the bolt-action rifle and telescopic sights. This made the early snipers extremely effective in the trenches, especially in the early phases of the war. During this time, the resistance didn't know how to counter them. One of the deadliest snipers at this time was an indigenous Canadian soldier named Francis Pegamagabo. He was born into the First Nations Ojibwe clan on Parry Island, Ontario. When he entered the war, he joined the Canadian Expeditionary Force. He fought as a scout and sniper, mostly operating in the dangerous no man's land, which is the place between two sides. By the time he suffered from a severe chlorine attack at the Second Battle of Ypres, he had already made 378 kills in the war. This chlorine attack permanently damaged his lungs. Later in 1917, he was hospitalized due to pneumonia. Number 3. Ivan Sidorenko 500 kills Ivan Sidorenko started his career in 1939. This was when he and others across Russia were enlisting in the Red Army to defend against the German invasion. He learned the necessary skills and in 1941 he was sent to fight in the crucial Battle of Moscow. At the time, he was only part of a mortar unit that loaded and reloaded long-range artillery shells. When he was not on duty, he would practice his sniping skills by using the German soldiers as his practice targets. He would pick off unsuspecting German soldiers wherever he could find them. It was like hunting birds for him. He did this with a standard issue Mosin Nagat rifle to make it even more interesting. In three years, he had managed to make 500 confirmed kills. This instantly made him one of the deadliest snipers in history, and all this time, he was still in the mortar unit. He became so good at sniping that he was relieved of his position on the mortar team and tasked with training new snipers on the front. He had managed to train more than 250 Red Army snipers on the Eastern Front before being seriously wounded in 1944, and it was from from these injuries that his career as a sniper came to an end. Number 2. Vasily Shalvovich 534 kills Before the Germans invaded Soviet Russia, Vasily Shalvovich worked on a collective farm in the Georgian SSR. He had previously served in the Red Army for a brief period between 1932 and 1933. However, it wasn't until the Second World War that he became a deadly sniper. By June 1942, Shalvovich had earned a place as a sniper in the 138th Infantry Division fighting at Stalingrad. By the time the war was coming to an end, Shalvovich had already killed 534 Nazis. This made him the most successful Soviet sniper of the war. Of all those kills, 15 were made in a period of six months between June and December 1944. He mainly fought in places across the front like Kirk, Stalingrad, Belarus, Lithuania, Latvia, Poland, and Germany. Talk about being deadly. Number 1. Simo Heha 542 kills In November 1939, the Soviet Union invaded Finland, marking the beginning of the Bloody Winter War. This war killed hundreds of thousands of people, making it one of the deadliest wars in history. And as much as the USSR ended up with a few territorial gains by the end of the war in March 1940, the war is greatly remembered for the stern resistance that the Finns showed. They managed to kill more than 126,000 Soviet soldiers, losing about 26,000 of their own. One of the people to be remembered during this war was Simo Heia, a farmer-turned-soldier. He was credited with the highest number of sniper kills in the history of modern warfare. In just 98 days, he had killed 542 Soviet soldiers. This earned him the nickname, the White Death. Unlike other snipers, his main weapon was a regular M28-30 rifle with no telescopic sights. Even though it was just a regular rifle, Heia had mastered it over the years as a hunter in the Finnish wilderness. These are just some snipers who defied all odds and killed so many people that it was hard to count. In fact, some might even say that the numbers were higher, given that there was no official record of it all. These snipers were deadly, but they fought for their own country.
Anyway, what do you think of these snipers? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more of our luxurious content. And why not click on another video showing now? This is The Luxurious. Talk to you in the next video.